Time for United States of Europe making fun of the EU the American way. Now that a democratic EU has given so many European countries the freedom to choose, so many European countries are choosing for fascism, the freedom from having the freedom to choose. But is nationalism really taking over in the EU? Time for three ways nationalism isn't winning in the EU. Nationalism, defined as how to take pride in shit you haven't done and hate people you've never met. These days in countries like Hungary, Poland, Slovakia, and maybe more, there are countries that embrace the idea of MAGA, make authoritarianism great again. How to deal with increasing EU nationalism? Well, I had a chance to talk with some EU leaders recently, and it turns out it's not as bad as you might think. EFR, Business Week. Well, we'll see what questions I get to ask European leaders in a moment. Leaders such as former French President François Hollande. Like, less than a year ago, French President Hollande. I mean, these days he's mostly known for turning over the keys to the current guy, Macron, but he's also known for being a bit gangsta. So, which version will we get today? As host, I got to sit right next to him. And here he is going over his notes, listening to the translation, with a headset that messed up his hair. But did he care? No. He was, how shall we say, nonchalant. Luckily, I got to host the Q&A. So, I put it to the followers on social media. Any questions you'd like me to ask him? Uh... Hit me up. And here's what I got. How to deal with extreme right-wing extremism on the rise in Europe. Note, not just extremism. Extreme extremism! Now, Francois Hollande actually had an answer to this question. It was basically, don't panic. Have faith in European rule of law. The rule of law, which is already having an effect in countries like Hungary, where Viktor Orban's media puppet master is under investigation by the EU's anti-fraud office, Olaf. Not to be confused with that Olaf. Although, when Europe freezes this guy's assets, it could be called Olaf's frozen adventure. So yes, the rise of populism could be seen as a threat to the West and endangers the character of the Union. But as America would say, our character has always been a little bipolar. Or as a French leader might say, vive la différence. So in conclusion, I'm glad I got to interview the former French president. Or as the American president would say, America first, Hollande second. Francois Hollande gives us hope with his new online initiative, France s'engage. In keeping with EU technocratic rules, it's hard to say and even harder to find online. And now we go to Central Eastern Europe, where Austria just elected a right-wing anti-EU government and Hungary just re-elected Viktor Orban, a man who is so anti-EU, he might just ban the use of the letters E and U, making the name of his country hangry. To find out who is more crazy right wing, we go now to our correspondent, Thomas Vamos, the Hungarian citizen living in Austria. Thomas. Thanks, Greg. Hey, everyone. My name is Tamás Vamos, host of the Night Night Union Show, comedian and actor. Today, I will be answering the question, which country is more right-wing, Hungary or Austria? And the answer, of course, is, <laughs> is this is even a fucking question. See, Austria is currently governed by a Christian conservative called Kurz, means short in German, short as in length. I'm sure no one ever made fun of him at school about that. No dig jokes. No, no that does not. Kurz, however, is currently governed by a far-right dude called Strache. He, however, comes from this Nazi upbringing. <laughs> he has a Nazi background. And interesting fact about him, if you take the first two letters away, Rache in German means rage. So if you take his name and you put a dot at the exact right point, he is called Saint Rage, which I think is very fitting for a far right dude. Now to examine Hungary, Hungary is run by Orban, or as most commonly known, uh, Putin's lapdog. Putin loves Orban very much, and the reason behind this Orban is the one and only politician who is shorter than Putin, so they instantly clicked. Uh, Orban is a really great guy, he loves to talk shit about the EU, spend EU money on propaganda against the EU, and build fences 
to keep migrants out. See, Austrians might not always like immigrants, but they didn't build the fence. And Hungary built the fence, but they built like this half-assed fence. Think about that. They could have built a fence completely around the country. They just built a little fence on the bottom and say like, guys, you're not coming in here. Slovenia is that way. We are keeping immigrants out of Europe. Are you though? Because I think you're totally not. You're not, that's not enough. Like, what do you think they were going to do? Like, do you build a fence on the bottom? They walk all from, all the way from Syria and then they see a little half-assed uh, metal fence and then they go like, oh, guys, fence, turn around. So I think this one's an easy shot. Hungary is more far right, not Austria. Back to you, Greg. Thomas Vamos from Vienna, Austria. Follow his show, Night Night Europe, on YouTube. Next up, Britain. Is the UK still a part of the EU? We'll be back with the Brexit update after this.